I'm John Bonaccio with the Linux Foundation. I'm going to talk a little bit about how DepMod works. So in, inside your kernel objects, your modules, so this is it's called module.ko. Inside of there, um, it's not just binary data. It's actually a bunch of tables. And so you have these different tables. And there might be one called dot .text. And you might have one called dot .data. And there's debug information. If the debug information is included, and then you'll have a section called dot init data or dot init text. And so when it loads the module, it'll load these sections up here in their own space and memory. And when the initialization process is totally done, then it actually can discard the memory that it allocated for these sections. And that's how it can keep these initialization sections separate and can keep track of where they are loaded in memory. And so what it'll do is it'll scan through all of the directories where the modules are and uh, all the directories and the subdirectories and look in there. And it'll start looking for symbols um, inside of here. So you'll have a, a symbol section in here. And so there'll be symbols in here. Um, you know, maybe this one is called uh, version. And so maybe a symbol in there doesn't have, uh, it's not resolved, it doesn't have an address for it. And so then it'll notice that this one needs this symbol to be reserved. And it'll go looking for another module. And maybe the other module has version in it as a symbol. And it's exported. And it'll go, well, this other module now depends upon this one as it goes through scanning through all the directories. And that is how DepMod works. <laughs>